On this episode of Electric Chris, I'm going to be going over the Volvo XC40 and its pilot assist. Think Tesla Autopilot. I'm going to do some stop and go traffic, do some freeway driving, share with you what I like, what I don't like, because there's some really annoying features in here, and uh, yeah, how it stacks up against the competition. Okay, let's get going. First up, Volvo XC40 Recharge, and this is the dual motor, so they call it the twin. Um, this, <laughs> this here, that down there, look, most everything feels like the Polestar, and that's a good thing, it's a great thing, it's a lovely interior. Um, this is a supplemental video, by the way, so you want to see the full review, uh, click up here somewhere, and uh, yeah, check it out, because um, it's a great car. Um, it's got a lot of power. This thing's got like 300 kilowatts of power, 660 newton meters of torque. I might be wrong about that figure, but if I am, I'll put it on screen. Okay, so first up, let's do some uh, radar cruise control with stop start traffic. And uh, you can see how it behaves, and one of the weird things that's going on here, which maybe you can explain to me. So, first of all, I'm going to put the follow distance let's just turn it on now all right and i have put in the follow distance at one so let's uh get it up to the speed limit here of 60 so you can see it's got radar excuse me uh sp speed sign recognition and let's get it up to 60. It's breaking a little late for my liking but it's fine i feel safe now watch this it's got to stop here now watch this it's going to creep forwards. I don't understand this. And then it will eventually stop. Now that car in front of me wasn't moving at all. It was stationary. I, I don't understand that. So unlike Tesla Autopilot that does stop and go traffic and it will actually um, move the car automatically and keep up with the traffic in front of it, uh, the Polestar, <laughs> excuse me, oh my god, that's so embarrassing, the Volvo XC40, eh, a bit of a slip there, but it, just, it feels the same, and it, it, that's a great thing, um, it, it won't actually automatically just jump off the line and keep going. Um, so let's now increase that distance to 5. And now it's going to create this more space, so the car in front of us is uh, too close for its liking, so it's backing off a bit. We're coming up to some more uh, traffic here that's stopping, and the car is slowing down. I have full confidence it's going to stop. My foot is nowhere near the brake now whatsoever. And this is better. This is better. And we're stopped. And now it's creeping forwards again. You see? I, I, it, it's baffling me why it's doing this. I really don't understand. Um, this car was almost brand new when I got it, and uh, it's had 832 kilometers, 834 kilometers now on it, and uh, you can see the efficiency there, 21.1 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers, so it's not very efficient. Um, this is baffling. And the other thing that drives me crazy is the uh, up and down. So uh, you want more distance between you and the car in front, you press this bottom uh, button. You want to actually decrease the uh, distance follow, you press the up button. And well, okay, I've got to stop thinking him as up and down because uh, it's like, no, um, this is going to decrease <laughs> the follow distance and this is going to increase the follow distance. It doesn't make sense, does it? It should be flipped around. It should actually be, if I press upwards, I'm going to increase the follow distance. And if I press it downwards, I'm going to decrease the follow distance. Just saying. Just saying. All right. <laughs> Enough of me ranting on. Let's now get out onto some uh, uh, highway driving, freeway driving. Um, and we'll throw this around some corners. And you can see how it behaves with some bends. Okay, so... Um, here's a good example coming up. We've got a whoa, about a 15 degree curve. It's a gentle curve, 60 k's per hour. It will be easy to do, so I'll just set it at the speed. And here we go. Now I'm going to tap my hands and I'm just going to very gently be holding the steering wheel. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. It's lane centering very nicely. I'm going a bit to the right for my liking there, but it is turning the steering wheel. And the nag factor will come quickly. Very quickly, the nag factor. It's, I, 
I reckon not even 10, 15 seconds before it will say, are you actually holding the steering wheel? Are you there? I'll do that again because we didn't have enough time to go around I think a decent bend. So we'll hang a left here actually. There's a good curvy road. All right, it's actually doing this steering right now. All challenging, got lines to consider. It doesn't know which lines, so it's finally got in there. Um, my hands are at the ready. I'm actually touching the steering wheel. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> There's the nag factor again. All right, we're gonna let it go through. It's gonna disengage, essentially. It gives you uh, three different warnings. And there we go, it's off. Okay, so. Um, yes, I know, I know, I'm naughty, I'm naughty. Ah, okay, I'm, I'm jiggling it, jiggling it, I'm jiggling it. All right, here we go. That's nice, it's not bouncing around the lane. Going around a 10 degree curve here, it's very gentle. Staying pretty well centered. There's a nag. And so it doesn't disengage, I'm just gonna give it a bit of a wiggle. One of the issues I've had with this car is that typically I like to hold my hand down the bottom of the wheel, either here in this sort of seven position or over here in that four position. Sure, I drive here when I'm doing some normal driving that doesn't involve radar cruise control with lane keep assist, but when I'm doing a freeway, very much so hands are down here. And that's the problem in this car because the nag comes thick and fast, even though you're still holding onto the wheel, doing what you're supposed to do, and that is to actively engage, be engaged with driving. It, I can't understand it, really can't. All right, now, we're gonna do some stop-start driving now, so let's just hit resume, and right straight, straight away there, um, here it goes. Watch, this, this is not unusual, by the way. It's creeping forward, I can't understand it. Didn't do this in the Polestar 2, the Polestar 2 performance, and now the car in front of it is gone, and I've got a pressed accelerator to resume the actual speeding up bit. Now watch how slowly this will actually get up to speed. It's very slow. There's no cars behind me, so I'm not holding up nobody. But thankfully, the blue car at the front there, uh, they're actually not going that fast. And what's well, the 60k per hour zone anyway, so good job, mate, good job. Here we go, a good demonstration of lane keep assist. We've got a section of road that um, is gonna go up and over a bridge. In my Tesla Model Y, it does this uh, so easily, it's effortless. Man, late braking here. Whoa, okay, it stopped, but mate, that was late. All right, car in front's departed, and there it goes, ready to drive. Perfect, that's what we wanna see. Okay, let's go, up to 80, so doing my 5k per hour increments, and I'm very gently gonna be holding the steering wheel. Ready to take over. Okay, it's a nice gentle curve. There's our nag factor, a little wiggle. I'm here. See what I mean? The car wanting that reassurance and the sensitivity setting is just, uh, they, they need to improve that threshold because I typically hold the steering wheel around here and quite often I'll actually get a reminder saying, hey, I don't think you're there and it will do that noise that you've heard and it will just keep going and going and yeah, truly frustrating. Thanks for a uh, bit of annoying experience not only for yourself but also for passengers in the car because if I was playing music it would actually uh, decrease the volume of the music once you heard that alert. Alright so this is under radar cruise control right now and it's slowing the car very nicely keeping a safe follow distance and we're gonna, I'm pushing it now, hit the accelerator just to get it through this corner. And that's fine. Oh, bit of overcorrection there. Keeps disengaging from the pilot assist. Got clear lane markings. 
There we go. Tech in the corner. Mm. It's a general progressive sort of 30 degree corner. Nag factor will come in a second. So that reminder to keep your hands actively on the wheel plus provide torque on it, a bit of pull, is only about 15 seconds. So look, let's finish this video up. Volvo XC40, it's a great car, um, love, beautifully appointed. Um, the, my only criticism of it is, is it's very thirsty. As you can see, 21 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. It's only got a 75 kilowatt hour usable battery. Uh, it's actually 78, but 75 usable. Uh, so you're only gonna get about 330, 350 kilometers of range out of this car typically. Um, the pile that assists is, well, strangely not anywhere near as brilliant as its uh, sister, the Polestar 2 or Polestar um, performance that I've actually tested. So again, if you want to go see those reviews, please go check the links at the end of this video. They'll be on the end card. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. And otherwise, I'll see you real soon and be good and be green.